so we here in Ireland, we don't have much of a, a wine culture. We, we, maybe, maybe the younger, gener younger generation, the uh, people in their maybe mid-30s now, maybe, maybe, um, have, are more familiar with wine. I know when I was growing up, it was a kind of a foreign drink, a snobby drink, right? It was for, like, rich people. Um, so we don't have much of a, a wine culture. But I remember a friend of mine who shall remain nameless, uh, we were visiting a family over in America, and uh, they wanted to, 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 to treat us well. And they were a fairly uh, wealthy family. So they got out a bottle of good wine, expensive wine, right? And um, so they gave us, you know, half glass each. Just so for yourselves as well, you only fill a wine glass halfway because you're not a savage, right? It's halfway. It has to breathe, apparently. It makes no difference at all. But um, it's supposed to. It's, it's all part of the liturgy. <laughs> so... All part of the right of drinking wine. So, uh, half filled two glasses, and I pretended I knew what I was doing. I went, mmm, very nice. Uh, so, uh, so this, this guy, the priest who I was with, took a sip of it, and uh, oh, it's a bit dry. And so, he gets a spoon of sugar, right? He puts a spoon of sugar into the wine and stirs it up. Then he drinks it and goes, perfect. Now, at this, <laughs> the family who were looking on were horrified <laughs> because look if that's the kind of wine you want we have cheap tesco wine walmart wine here in a box that'll do you fine you know what i mean there's no point wasting this uh, good wine on you uh and i find that it's just an interesting thing when it comes to the, the 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 treasures of our church the treasures of our church it's very easy to underestimate them especially we get used we get used to them you know they've been around for ages and so they just become kind of yeah, normal. And so, so normal that we can begin to disregard them. So normal that we begin to think maybe, maybe they need a bit of upgrading, a bit of updating, a bit of modernizing, right? Uh, so that's the, the, the fatal flaw that we're going to cover today. So the first one that we covered a couple of days ago on All Saints was this, this idea that, that everyone goes to heaven because if everyone goes to heaven, then there's no point in having any sacraments, no point in praying, there's no point in trying because we're going to get there. Anyway, so there's just no point the church is redundant. Everything is redundant. The cross. Now, maybe you could argue that the reason we, got, we all get to heaven in the first place is because Christ died. So maybe the cross isn't redundant. Maybe not. But either way, every, everything else is if everyone simply just goes to heaven. Okay, so that's, that's just a complete made-up, sorry, made-up fallacy. It does not say that in Scripture. It does not say that in teaching the church. That's just made-up because it makes people feel good. But it's rubbish. Uh, so let's just be really clear about that. Um, Okay, then yesterday's one, which is right, it's second has slipped my mind, uh, which someone's going to remind me of. Yesterday we covered. Faster, faster, yeah, fast mass is better. Yeah, fast, the faster the better when it comes to mass, right? Uh, which again, it just, it cheapens it. It cheapens, if we celebrate mass that way, we cheapen it. And mass deserves the ultimate reverence, which isn't to say it has to be an hour and 20 minutes long. In fact, I'd probably recommend it. It's not, but, but it, it should be celebrated reverently, reverently, reverently. Whatever time it takes, it takes. Okay, today, though, I want to cover this idea that, that uh, that Catholic spirituality is insufficient, right? So, a lot of the time, when people look, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to group in a couple of things here that shouldn't really be grouped together, because obviously sacraments are way above everything else, but I'll have to lump them all in together just for the sake of um, brevity. So, when people look at maybe at, at the Eucharist, they go, yeah, you know, people don't believe in the Eucharist, so we need something else. Uh, confession, when people don't believe in confession, or people maybe, uh, confession maybe makes people feel guilty, so we need something else. Or, you know, the rosary, young people don't like the rosary. Sessions of Cross, no, no one prays them anymore. Uh, Divine Mercy Chapel, that's just a Polish devotion. Um, any of these, Brown Scapular, oh, that's, that's just for GA players, footballers. I love seeing GAA players, scapulars flap out around the place when Mayo or taking on Kerry or something, the scapular is flying everywhere. Um, but but this kind of, the, all these, so for, for many, many people, and even many people involved in youth ministry, the, this idea is very, very prevalent. Young people do not like traditional Catholic devotions. Just this, this idea is there, and there I call it a, an absolutely fatal flaw, right? Because it is, that's, that's, you see, okay, some might say, well, young people don't pray the rosary. Young people don't know anything about the rosary. I mean, if you ask people in schools, in secondary schools, smart kids, plenty of education on, under their belts, 
I, I remember asking them before about the rosary. They said, oh yeah, is that the, uh, is that the dead prayer? Sorry, the, the what? Oh, you know, the funerals, like, because at the funerals, when the, when the coffin is laid down, often um, a deck of the rosary is prayed. And that's, that was his only knowledge of, of the rosary the, for dead people. That's it. So it's not that we've kind of been exposed to these things and we've rejected them. We just never knew them. So the reason maybe young people don't pray the rosary is because they don't have any clue what it is. They don't, just don't know what it is. I remember, like, when, you, when, when I went to, to youth events <coughs> back in the 90s when I was young, uh, See, a lot of these things, <clears throat> the way to kind of put it across, the way to kind of win people, you win young people to them, was make them sh show that they're just completely normal. So you went to a youth retreat, and then the Blessed Sacrament was brought out. And everyone dropped to their knees, so everyone dropped to their knees, I suppose I dropped to my knees as well. And then everyone's praying, looking that way, so I suppose I looked that way. What else did they do? They looked like they're closing their eyes. And, and then someone takes out a Bible and go, oh, Bible, that's probably good. Take out a Bible flick. And then you learn. If you just get the, the next retreat, kind of something similar, this time you don't look around so much because you're getting more familiar with it. You take out your wee Bible, go for a little scan, pick a passage, meditate on it. There you are. We do an adoration. That's how I learned. Do you know what I mean? Like, you learn by example. So rather than uh, gathering a bunch of youth, young people saying, now, look, there, there are some Catholics who believe this is Jesus. If you don't, that's okay. That's okay. And so if you're comfortable, you can pray. And if you're not comfortable, you don't have to. And so we might bring Jesus out. If you're comfortable with that, if anybody isn't, then we won't. Is that okay? Okay, so we... No, it's okay. If, if one person has objected, then we won't, okay? One person has, has objected, so we'll bring out a picture of a tree. Is that okay? Are we all okay with trees? Okay, a tree. A tree? Okay, so let's... You know, and that's, that's often the way, the way prayer with young people goes today. There's no kind of conviction... This stuff is awesome. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's no kind of, there's no kind of, like, if you want to, imagine if we're trying to advertise the thing. You know, even like a bit of marketing. Right? Let's, let's, get, let's get into that stuff of the world, right? A bit of marketing. If, if you're trying to sell anything and you immediately start apologizing for its, in, its inadequacies, you know, buy a Ford. They're good. They tend to rust. They, they, the undercarriage, especially if you live in a country where there's a lot of salts, like, you know, where they salt the roads, uh, they roast, but they're good. They, they, they mean well. They're good. <laughs> what? You won't sell us. That's a stupid. Like, this is a really stupid approach. Well, why do we have that approach to spirituality? Pray if, if, if you want. If you don't, that's okay too. You're still a good person. I'm sorry, do you want them to pray or don't you? Is prayer something that they require or isn't it? You know, it's just to be, like this, this, this fatal flaw that the prayer or all these devotions are our sacraments, that they're just unnecessary. Have we any conviction at all? So, obviously when it comes to sacraments, they're non-negotiables. These are the seven treasures of our church. Now, even like just, just yesterday, I had this fantastic experience of someone exper uh, discovering real peace and a weight lifted off their shoulders through the power of confession. Confession, right? The antidote to guilt it doesn't cause guilt. It's what takes guilt away. Why don't we market it that way? Why don't we call it a sacrament of healing just a little more often? It's an amazing sacrament. You got people, young people full of guilt because while this isn't about pointing the finger, but they know themselves they've done things that they're not supposed to do. Or they've done things on a weekend and a Monday morning or Sunday morning. They wake up thinking, oh my goodness, and they feel so bad for it. For maybe betraying a relationship or ending up drunk or whatever it may be. And you know, they, they made mistakes. So we're not here to tell people that they're bad, but yeah, if those things, if, you, if you've done some of those, those things and they're wrong, we have the antidote here. Confession. So rather than saying, you know, you, you're beautiful and you're a princess and you're good inside regardless of what you've done. Well, maybe you've made stupid mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Like, and like, let's acknowledge that because a person knows in their own conscience if they've made mistakes. Okay. But rather than just kind of, let's just put, it, put the past, the past is in the past. No, the past comes with you. <laughs> right? It's like... That's just a ridiculous idea. You know what I mean? Just, like, you can't just delete your past and everything's okay, okay, we're just we're friends. Like, sorry, you've made mistakes. Great, now you bring these real mistakes, which actually happened to the Lord, and the Lord says, you are forgiven. Now, that's real healing. Right? Why don't we have the confidence to offer that to young people? Why apologize for it all the time? 
See, if we adults, if, if we adults or those involved in, in ministry or mission in general, if we don't believe in them, we won't promote them. We don't promote them, the younger people won't know about them. Then the young people grow up and they never knew about them, so they won't talk about them to the next generation. So this is kind of what's happened over the last couple of generations. Little by little, we've lost uh, conviction and, and, and uh, maybe belief, faith, in everything from the sacraments, then down to you know miraculous medals and holy water and uh, sacred heart pictures and houses and all those kind of you know good uh, sacramentals that are out there as well, they they all transmit grace in their own way. Great. Does anybody here not need grace? Anybody here not need God's help? Anybody watching not need God? I mean, like, so if God wants to transmit a, a grace or a blessing to us through these things, fantastic. But to say, no, that's all old hat. So what we need to do is we need to come up with you know, ways that, that, that connect more with the young people. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a mobile on the altar, you know, and uh, just this idea you know, then that, that maybe God is calling. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I've seen these things before where you get a bucket and everyone has to put in their stone. <laughs> okay. It's not confession, though. You know, it's not confession. So, like, if, if we believe, like, and you've, you've probably seen this in many of the testimonies where young people here, as you'll be hearing them throughout the year, uh, a, a key moment for, for so many of them was going to a Youth 2000 retreat, where they walk in, and it's about a thousand young people on their knees in front of the Lord, uh, and they're praying. And then there's, there are action songs and fun songs and praise songs, and then there's a Mass which is reverently celebrated. And even though you come in knowing nothing or knowing very little, you just you pick it up from what's going on around you, and then maybe even even in three days or one weekend retreat, suddenly the lights come on in your heart, and you recognise, my goodness, this stuff is true. Now, this is also kind of a flip side to that. This stuff is true. It also means my life might need to change, because if that's true, then I shouldn't be doing this, and that's where the tension can arise. But that's another story. Ultimately, though, you see you see the thing lived, and you go, this is this is true, and I I, I know it like. I don't know in my heart. I just, these things work. And then like, you know, the rosary, our lady in Fatima who asks in every single apparition there, pray the rosary, pray the rosary. But we might think, well, young people don't like the rosary. Young people don't know the rosary. Because late at night, half 10, 11 o'clock, when the dust starts to settle and, and hopefully they're turning off their phones and going to sleep. Is that true? Yes, of course it is. Um, that then when things get a little quiet, then the head might start to get a bit busy because now you start replaying the day. And not just the day, but yesterday and the day before and all your other mistakes, especially if the enemy is kind of prowling around like a roaring lion waiting for someone to eat, as St. Peter says. Uh, he can be reminding you of different things that have happened. So isn't it just fantastic then that in your bed, you don't have to kind of invent a load of prayers. You can just take out a rosary and you don't have to do any thinking. You just pray. It's such a gift. Because if you have to invent your own, as they call them, informal prayer, I don't know if you'd be able to pray more than 10 seconds, 20 seconds. You'll say, hi Jesus, how are things? Um, thanks for today. Bless mammy, and daddy, and me. And, and the, the dog, I suppose. I suppose. You, you like dogs, you created them. Christ our Lord, amen. You know, like, how, how long can you talk if you're praying informally, maybe some people are better than others, but generally speaking, you know, a minute or two, like you, you kind of run out of stuff to say. Whereas a rosary, you don't have to actually think of anything. You just you, you pray the decade, and you're just immersing yourself in these scriptural words. What a gift! This is a gift. This is a good thing. It's a, like a, a, such a, a great tool to have in our spiritual toolbox for these spiritual battles that we have to engage in. So why not offer them to our young people? It's a fatal flaw. To think that young people or people in general do not like, want, or need traditional Catholic devotions. That's just made up. It's just modernism. Now, I'm not here just to, to give out, but I think we, d we do need a bit of clarity when it comes to these things. If, especially if these things have been given to us by heaven. If these things have been given to us by God, he knows what he's doing. So he's given us the sacraments. Right? He's given us the rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the Stations of the Cross, all of these things. Right? They're divinely inspired. They're good, they're good for our, our, our souls. So, so let's use them. And very common sense expression, if it's not broken, don't fix it. If these devotions still work, then they still work. They don't need to be replaced.
Now maybe we as, 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 as say ministers, maybe we have to get a little more familiar with them and maybe fall in love with them again or rediscover them. Because uh, admittedly, especially in Ireland, um, those from yesteryear might have kind of grown up where they were kind of forced to pray, forced to go to Mass and forced into confession and all these kind of things. And then there can be a kind of a rebellion against it once we're free. You know, I think Ireland is going through a kind of a, a, a teenage rebellion stage in its spirituality where anything old is bad. Uh, hopefully we'll kind of swing back a bit in time, but, but yeah, this, this flaw is there, that old spiritualities are wrong or don't fit today anymore. That's not true. It's not true. So let us be confident that what God has inspired and what God has given us is sufficient even today for you, for me, for young people, for those in need, for those uh, in the lap of luxury, for everyone. Everyone needs the Lord. So may, may we rediscover the beauty and the grace of all of these sacraments and sacramentals. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us for uh, this homily via YouTube, via our live stream, or via the various podcasts. Uh, thank you so much for, for being part of our extended family, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, if these have helped you in some way, if they have they've blessed you, if they've helped you uh, in your faith in some way, in order to uh, facilitate our mission and, and, and encourage our mission, allow our mission to continue, uh, you might consider uh, maybe donating towards a uh, holy family mission, towards our formation of our young people here in uh, a place near Clonmel uh, in County Tipperary in, in Ireland. So if you wish, you can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie, and there's a donate tab there, and we greatly appreciate any help that you can give us. Obviously, we'd be delighted for your prayers as well. Please do pray for us. Uh, this is not just <coughs> a battle against flesh and blood but also obviously we're engaged in a whole spiritual battle here as well so we need your help uh, on the spiritual front as well as on the material front in order to to uh, allow our mission to continue so thank you so much for your for your generosity and for your support and be assured of our prayers especially on wednesday when we offer our mass and our prayers for all of our friends and benefactors so god bless you and we'll hopefully see you or hear you uh, on a future podcast or homily god bless mm -hmm.